Today we're going to study nets. Now a net is a two-dimensional pattern that can be folded to form a three-dimensional figure. So what it is, is if I take this Kleenex box and we pretend the hole isn't there and it's just a rectangular prism, it's a net would be if I would cut this box and lay it out flat. And then it turns into just a bunch of polygons that flat that I could then fold back up to form this box. Now what I want you to see here and what I want to emphasize is um, a three-dimensional figure can have more than one net. If I would cut up this box, if I cut it back here and fold it this way, that's going to put the top on this end. But I could also cut it here and fold it back, right? So right there, there's an example of this rectangular prism having two different nets right there. We're going to be able to form a bunch of different ones today. Now, what can we use this for? We will use this as being one method to find the surface area of a solid, geometric solid. There are also lots of formulas we could use. We'll go over that Monday. And then what you will have to do is pick which way you like better, whether you like using it the net way or the formula. That'll be up to you. All right, so when we look at these, and I give you the net that is a representation for a three-dimensional solid, there are going to be two ways for you to try and figure it out. If you're good at what's called spatial acuity, which is seeing stuff in your mind and manipulating it, and rotating it, moving around, you might actually be able to take that and like fold it up. The dotted lines are where, the, where you would fold, or like the creases if it were a box or something. And you could fold it up and then try and picture it in your mind. I'm not very good at that, so I like to do it by deductive reasoning. When I look at this, I see that I have one, two shapes that are parallel. How do I know they're parallel? They'll never touch. When I fold them up like this, they'll be like on opposite ends, right? So I have two parallel shapes that will never touch. Are they the same shape? That makes this what kind of shape, prism or pyramid? Prism. Also, I could figure out it's a prism because what are the rest of these shapes? So these are my bases. What are all these shapes here in the middle? Rectangles. So the fact that it has two bases and the sides are all rectangles makes it a prism. Now I need to know what kind of prism it is. So now I'll go back to the base. What is the shape? Thank you. So it is a what kind of prism? Very good. Rectangular prism. This is the way I like to figure out what a net is. I'm going through all my rules for three-dimensional geometric solids, although that's redundant, just geometric solids, and coming up with what it would be using those. Because the definition of a rectangular prism is it has two uh, rectangular bases, and all the faces are rectangles. OK, I look at this one. Well, look at this, this, this. What would this part be? This would be my base right here. That's right. And these are all just triangles. So all my faces are triangles, which means it's a what? It's a pyramid because all the faces are triangles. And then the base is a triangle. So what kind of pyramid? Triangular. Right? It's a triangular pyramid because the base is a triangle and all the faces are triangles. So far, so good? I told you this was a good lesson for Friday. How about that one? OK, I got two triangles there. They're on opposite ends, which means they'll never touch. And these are rectangles here. So what shape has two base, two identical shapes that are bases, and then all the faces are rectangles? Prism or pyramid? It's a prism. Because the faces are rectangles, and I have one, two bases that are parallel and identical or parallel and congruent. That makes it a prism. And then all the bases, that shape is a triangle. So it makes it a triangular prism. I got the mute on, by the way, so this won't be on the internet. No? You're good? Okay. 
The other thing you'll have, so the first thing you might have, you'll have to do tonight is that they'll give you the net and you have to identify what the shape is. The other one is, thing you'll have to do is you'll have to draw the net for this given shape. Does anybody want to try this? Yeah. Come on up, Shane. There you go. All right, so right square pyramid. It's a pyramid, so all the faces are... Pyramid faces are triangles or rectangles? That's right. So the faces are triangles. And the base is what? Square. Very good. That's all you need to know. Now you need to figure out how do I draw it. I always like to start with the base when I'm working with the net of a, of a uh, pyramid. Yeah, it's, it's close, though. Then what do you have to have? Good. Good. Very good, Shane. That's it. Perfect. That is it. That is correct. That's a good answer. Here's a better answer. What makes this a little bit better of an answer? Yeah, just shows, shows the fold lines. Do I expect you to do that? No, but it, if you do it, it's this is this is correct, and it's a good answer. This is a better answer, All right? But the idea that hit mine the exact same way. I don't know that there's another way to do a, a square pyramid, to do a net for that. Now this is the hard one: a cylinder, a right cylinder. What would it look like? Well. It's hard to visualize, isn't it? I can see your head going right now. She's like, um, here's the cylinder. What would the net look like? Ah, yes. Now, here's the, the hardest part to figure is this: the height of the cylinder, the sides of a cylinder, the bendy part. That's the definition my students always like. Here's the cylinder, right? So if I cut this and then fold it flat, what shape do I have? A rectangle. And this, by the way, finding the surface area of the cylinder is the hardest one to find the surface area of, hardest shape. Here's why. So we, we take a cylinder and then we cut it down the middle. And this lateral part becomes a rectangle. Well, what do I have on the top and bottom then? Circles. I have a circle and a circle. That's what the net looks like. Yeah, if I want to find the surface area of this, this is what makes this so difficult. This would just be the height of the cylinder, right? And here I could find the area of this two circles, correct? I find the area of one of them multiplied by two, so pi r squared times two. But to find the area of the rectangle, it's what? This width here times this length or height, correct? What is the width? What's the width? How can you measure that? It's not the diameter. It's the circumference of this circle. It's this distance right here. Because if I would roll this back up, it would give me this part right here, which is the circumference of that circle. So how do you find the circumference of a circle? Pi times the diameter. So you have to do pi times the diameter just to get this number, then you multiply it by the height. So is it really that hard? No, but it is a few a lot of steps. But that's the form that's how we would find it for a right cylinder. <coughs> but anyway, this is what the net looks like. A rectangle with the two circles. You might see it on an upcoming test or mid chapter quiz. All right. I can draw a net even if I'm given the picture. What is that? That is a triangular prism. If it's hard to see, you could actually fill in the other. And then you see you have two triangles and how many rectangles? Three. Three rectangles, right? There has to be one for each side of the base. The base has three sides. It's a triangle. All right. Anybody want to draw this one? Volunteers? You drew a triangular pyramid. This is a triangular prism. 
There's going to be more than one way to do this. That's fine. That's fine. No problem. You want to add dotted dash lines? That's fine. Yeah, see, that's too wide. Here, watch. I have white out. See, those wouldn't be dashed, would they? I know. Try it now. There. Very good. That is a triangular prism. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is, do the triangles have to be in this place right here? No, I could take and move this triangle to this end and this one over here. And they're still... It's still the net of a triangular prism. Yes, sir. They can. Triangles can be both on the same. They can be right there. That's fine. Yes, ma'am. Why can't this be a pyramid? It has two bases. A pyramid has one base. See that one? How they would all fold up and meet at the point, meet at the vertex. That's why. And the, this has to be a pyramid. See the pyramid, the faces are triangles. In a, and this, this is a triangular prism, just like he just drew. See all the faces here are rectangles. That's the difference. The sides of a, of a prism are rectangles. The sides of a pyramid, besides coming to just the vertex, they're all triangles. That's the biggest difference between a prism and a pyramid. Right, one thing we can, and I mentioned this in the beginning, you can use a net to find the surface area. Draw the net of a cube that has the side, that has a side length of 9 centimeters. Then find the surface area. A cube is what? Bless you. It's what kind of prism? It's a rectangular prism. It's a special case of a rectangular prism where all the faces are squares, not rectangles. And a square is a rectangle, so because they call it a cube. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't there. They didn't consult me when they made the rules. It was some time ago. All right, so if I'm going to draw this, first I need to start with the square. There. All right, there's my square. How many faces do I need? Six. Okay. There are going to be three or four or five or more different ways to do this. How do you think I should draw this? Well, let me get some, let me clone this and get all six faces. Where do I, so if this is my base, if this is the bottom, and I can do it this way. I don't have to, but I can. I could do it like this. Would that be a cube? The net of a cube? If you cut it right, it would just all lie out flat, right? Actually, no. At some point, no, it wouldn't. Yeah, I need the two sides right there. So that's a net of a cube. Because I could just lie it out flat and those sides just come out on the end. Is there another way? Come on. Okay, one right in the middle. And this is probably the one most people think of. One on each side for each of the sides. Good. Come on. There we go. So this one in the middle here would be the bottom. And then we like fold out for each of the sides. And then where would the top go? Any of the four. That's right. You could put this. This top would, would be the top. Come on. The top of the cube here. You could put it there. You could put it here. You can put it here. So a cube really does have a lot of different ways. So let's say we'll just leave it there. Now what we can do with this is we can find the surface area. It says that the side has a length of 9 centimeters, which means this is what? 
9 centimeters as well, which means the area of this square is 81. 9 times 9, 81, or the side square. Right. And that means each one of these has an area of 81 square centimeters, or you could take the area of one of them to get 486 square centimeters. Very good. What do you think? Not too bad? You should definitely finish this before you go today. My other classes did today. They finished.